timeline pictures, wanting to build a timeline of view history. Um, and so, ooh, I don't know what that was, <laughs> sorry. Somebody recommended watching Worth the Wait. So we did, we, I sat with my students, we watched Worth the Wait. I really actually thought both of them fell asleep. Um, <laughs> they were might have, I don't know, high schoolers. But about halfway through, my one high schooler turned to me, paused the movie and said, oh my God, Abby, I thought Butte was a crap hole. She said something else. I thought Butte was a crap hole, but it's not. She was blown away. She had no idea that our community looked, had looked the way it did. Um, you know, I, she had been in classrooms with me three times before and been hearing me ramble on about Superfund and restoration and remediation, and it finally dawned on her. And so then it kind of spurred along and it changed our project to more of before and afters and starting to look at you know, because we forget, right? So um, the other thing I'll say about this is that this this took a village, okay? This is not just my work. This is uh, my high school students' work, Aliyah Anders. This is Julia Cranes. This is John Sesso's, uh, Jeremy Grapple, um, Joe Griffin. Lots of players, Matt Vincent, lots of people have contributed um, these photos, and we've kind of been working on it and tailoring it over time, okay? So bear with me. So, um, first I want to start with Superfund. What is it? <laughs> it's a big mess. That's great, right? Yeah. Big, big money. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Perfect. Let's do that. And I don't know if it's the... No, I turned it down on the wall. Oh. Yeah. Good. So, uh, I had the privilege of working... Can you guys still hear me? Is that yeah. better? Yeah. Um, so I had the privilege previous to my position with Beautiful Rebo uh, as working for the Clark Fork Watershed Education Program. And so a lot of what we do is we educate about all things super fun. Um, and I had the opportunity to, to travel from Butte all the way to Helmville, um, Obando, Missoula, all those all those places um, and visit these sites. So bear with me if I a little like elementary or informal. That's just it's because it's funner that way. So super fun, right? So when you break up the word, you look at it. Fund is this big pot of money, right? So super fund, it is this thing, right? This big pot of money that was funded by what they call polluter pay tax fees. Okay, so a polluter. If you were a polluter, you paid a tax to put into that, right? Okay, and then if you became a super fund site, you were eligible for those monies, right? Um, so. Uh, mm -hmm little caveat there, right, is that Superfund actually was defunded somewhere in the 90s and is actually broke. Butte is lucky. We're very fortunate. Our whole Superfund area is fortunate because we got our money a long time ago, right? Um, sometimes I get people that worry, like, what are we going to do? We're good. We got it. So what is a Superfund site? A big mess. I liked it. A big mess. <laughs> the definition is a toxic waste site that is required by law to be cleaned, okay? So I, when I roll that out to the kids, I let it sink in for a minute, and I ask them what they think. And of course, they pick up on the word toxic, right? Who wouldn't, right? Toxic waste site. But then I ask them to look closer at the definition, and I say, look, look again. What's the back half of that definition? Required by law to be cleaned. That's important, right? We're not stuck the way we are, the way we were. We're going to keep getting better, right? Um, do you live in one? Yes. Sure do. Sure do, right? What do you think? Good? Bad? Yeah? I know. When I ask my kids, they're always like, uh, you said it was a toxic waste site, so of course I'm going to say bad. And then that's great. That's the hope. I hope that's the platform I'm springing off into because. Sure, it does sound bad, but I, that's why, ooh, why, um, that's why this is necessary, right? Because, this way, okay, that's why um, this is necessary, is because I'm hoping through this presentation, you can start to see maybe through my eyes, right, why I believe, this is my opinion, but why I believe that this is a good thing, okay? Why, why we're getting the help we need. Um, and we're not alone. Right? So this is as of June 12, 2019 from EPA. This is all of the Superfund sites in the United States, okay? 
So as of June 12th, there were 1,344 active. Those are the red dots, okay? All those guys are active. Um, there were 48 proposed, so that's all the yellow ones. Proposed is a tricky place to be in, I think, for a Superfund site because you have to get the funding through Superfund or you need to have a potentially responsible party, right? Which we have, okay? Um, the green, those are the cleaned up, checked off, taken off the list. So there's about 413 of those guys, okay? So again, not alone in this. Last, like, look at Jersey, Ooh. right? Jersey number one and having the most. That's not a joke, they are. But theirs are small, right? Some of theirs are like the size of this room and they're cut <coughs> off, okay? Um, here we are, right? There's our three, four, and we live in ours, right? Okay, so we're also number one. Bear with me on this, don't think I'm crazy. We're number one because we're the largest right most complex we're the oldest right jim yes yeah right we're the oldest yeah we are the oldest yeah so you know you gotta you gotta look at it depends on how you look at things i get it but you know this is how i look at life so um moving in closer right this is our upper clarksburg mega super fun site okay so starting down in butte we have the silver bow creek butte area right then we move into the Anaconda Smelter Hill. Then we move into this Clark Fork River corridor as well as the Milltown sediments, okay? And then we also have Montana Pole Plant here in view, right? Now we're one big thing, right? So we're at the like 10,000 foot level, and then I just branched us off into like four. But then within those four, if you're familiar, right, we have things called operable units, right? And there's several in each of these guys. So that's where we get super complex, right? Um, and I think that's a good thing because that way we're able to really carefully kind of tailor and look at these and scrutinize, do lots of different things, right, with each site because they're all different, okay? Uh, so here's our Butte super fun site, right? So we have a uh, we have a number of things going on here, right? So we have, this is the Bibsu, right? So we have our Butte Priority Soil Unit. Uh, we have the Bimfu, lots of acronyms and super fun. Uh, the Butte Mine Flooding Operable Unit. Uh, we have, out here we have Rocker Timber and Framing. Uh, we have Montana Pole in there. We have West Side Soils, or Non-Priority Soils. Am I forgetting any, Julia, Jeremy? I think I forgot one, but, um, yeah, so this is, what we are, right? So, jumping in, um, I don't know if you guys have seen this map before. This is like a gold standard of looking what Butte looked like back in the day. So this is one of the Weeds maps created in 1903. Um, and I love it because you can see, right, here's Silver Bow Creek coming down, right? And then there's the confluence with Blacktail, okay? Um, all of these marks in here, what this means is that it was kind of this like swampy marshland. Okay, and that's what we think a lot of the, this valley was, was a lot of swampy, thick, lush, riparian, okay? Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this, right, is so Silver Oak Creek, but you can see where she's been dammed up, right, by smelters, okay? So this was in 1903, pretty early on. These are all tailings impoundments, okay? So that's all waste. So then, fast forward 1955, there you can see from these aerial photos, right? There's our waste piles, right? Mm. All of this waste along the creek, right? Because they were using the creek to settle out the part of the mining process, right? Settle out the tailings, okay? Um, then, right, fast forward to 2013. <coughs> Here we are with our active continental Berkeley pit, right? Montana Resources property, okay? So, zooming in on this again, um, what I'm going to be doing is I'll kind of go back and forth to give you guys a good idea of this, but I'm going to be doing a lot of just before and after photos, pointing out some things to you guys, going back and forth. If there, if you want to go back to something, yell, okay? Super informal. informal. So again, right? Look at all that waste. Right? Here's our, here's Silver Bow Creek coming down, right? Channelized. All that waste, okay? Um, and here's uh, the Google image I took from this last summer, okay? Wow. So again, here's kind of reference for you. There's Silver Bowl Creek coming back in, and that's kind of all changed. So to, again, to go back, 
right? A lot of ways in place, I realize black and white image, hard to tell the green. We're gonna dive into this more, don't worry. Um, but arguably, it's a little better, I would say. Um, diving on into this, into this lower area one, okay? So this is Centennial, right? Um, there's big amount of waste, right? Big amount. Um, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this, right, but Silver Bowl Creek was declared a dead creek in 1898, okay? What that meant was no fish, right? No organisms, things like that. We were that way for a long time. No wonder, right? I mean, that's why I love this photo. Bear with me again. I realize only like super fun geeks get like really like, oh my God, it's beautiful when you see these. You're like, yes. I know, bear with me. Um, but no wonder, no wonder. And this is what we have today, right? So they took the creek out of that waste. They gave her a meandering stream channel, right? Because okay. creeks are kind of a living entity, right? They're living, they're moving, right? Um, can you see better there? Oh, perfect, perfect, good. Right, so we took, we gave her her own little floodplain. Already you can see the improvement, right? Look at how green it is. Just what a difference, right? What's missing from all these photos? Pretty much the theme is vegetation, right? Mm -hmm. And you can ask, you know, you ask kids that, and they're like, oh my gosh, the plants, right? <laughs> Oops, sorry. So, um, continuing on down Silver Bowl Creek, right? So this is more Colorado feelings. <coughs> I apologize that this picture's a little blurry. Um, this was taken back in, we figured 1997, somewhere in there, 1999. Um, but again, I love it, because look at all the waste, right? Look at that. Some slag material, we got some copper salts, right? Lots of tailings, what are we missing? <laughs> Vegetation! I know, right? Beautiful, beautiful. But, but, you know, the other thing to this, guys, is that this was our front yard, right? This is what people driving in on the interstate, this is the first thing they saw. We just need some kids playing in that picture. I got that, I got that, don't worry, it's coming, it's so coming, yes. It's coming, and my seventh graders are always like, oh my god, they were playing. Yes, we're gonna get there. But it's beautiful, and then, wow. That speaks volumes. Those are willows. Willows don't tolerate pollution, right? They don't. That's a stream. Oh my God, that's that grass? Like, it's crazy. What? We don't have this in view, but we do. But Where, we do. Where's that taken from? Then? This one is taken back towards, I think this one is out towards Whiskey Gulch, and this one's taken back towards, that's um, the Continental Divide. How far west did it tell them? Years ago, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I heard for breakfast. Oh, man. It's like about halfway, about like halfway from my office. Yeah, probably, yeah. That's really nice. That's really good. Oh, you should see it now. Just wait. Wait. Oh, just pull up. Okay. <laughs> Continuing on in this, right? So this is 2005, right? Look at these baby willows. Look how adorable. Baby willows, 2005. So this is after they returned the stream back, after they restored this area, took out the waste, right? And then this. Look at, they're growing up. This is 2018. So this is that wow, same Whiskey Gulch area. If you guys haven't been out there, go. It's beautiful. It's the part of the Greenway Trail. It's an amenity. It's a public space for all of us, right? Public property. Um, there, this last summer I was out there hiking, I took a group through there on the Hike Through History series, and it, we had a great time. Um, lots of animals have been starting to use this area. I've seen lots of different <coughs> herons, um, deer, you guys have been out there, it's amazing. Cool. Yeah, I encourage you all to go out there. Um, this is a little farther down on some Real Creek still. So this is like as you're, this is off of Fairmount Road. So as you're going to Fairmount, right, it crosses over Silver Bowl Creek. Um, and this picture, I apologize, it's not my best one of showing the dirty dirt there, but I'll try to point some things out. This was all barren. Everything back from there was barren. These were all plants that only grow in pollution. Okay, you really only found one kind of grass and it was tough to hair grass. <coughs> this opposite bank, it's hard to see here. This is like four to six feet of tailings thick. It was just a wall. And all of the willows were dead. Um, we brought kids out here for field trips and it was wonderful because your pH was like a three to three and a half. You had nothing living. It was like the poster child of kids understanding like, oh yeah, this is what waste will do, right? Um, and then here it is today, right? This was taken last summer. So they cleaned it all out. 
Um, planted a bunch of trees. We've had a lot of beavers move back in. The fish are looking up there. Um, I've seen ospreys hunting on there, which is like good and bad, right? Because we're trying to recover the fisheries there. But <laughs> yay, ospreys, right? So um, just amazing. Again, the Greenway Trail is eventually going to go through this. So this is Durant Canyon kind of leading up to there. But if you cross over the interstate, right, there's a parking lot. And you can continue on the Greenway out there. Beautiful area, public space, right? Oh, OK. When Ellen found these, I was like, yes. So these are from the Smithers Collection. Um, and this is a kid's fishing derby in 1950. Oh, wow. Right? Okay, again, reminder, right? How did we have a fishing derby when we were a dead creek for over 100 years? Great question. So they would take fish and they would transplant them into here an hour before the derby began. Right? They probably were like, catch me, please. Poor things. Yeah, so look at that. Look at all the waste these kids are sitting up. Look at, there's some grass, some. But look at all that, beautiful. So this is Blacktail at that confluence where it goes into, this is Silverville Creek, okay? I'll show you another view in a minute here, right? So Slidewall Canyon in the background, the railroad over. It's a beautiful day for a fish and derby, right? And here's today. Oh my God. Oh my God, right? Thank you. What? Oh, willows. Again, look at all those riparian plants. Look at those cattails. Ah! I'm, I'm a biologist, but is my background, sorry. So I like really geek out with like this. And, and then Julia has to be like, and, and the people, yes. We're, we're also organisms in this, yes, yes. So, again, another view from that. Love this one even more. Look at this. So, Silverboat Creek. We had channelized it by that point, right? What I mean by channelized is we have blocked her in place. She's not a free-flowing stream anymore. She's not meandering, right? Um, I have a student, a high school student, look at this, and she was like, it's like when you add your coffee creamer into your coffee. <laughs> uh-huh, sure. Yeah, that's all that sludge, right? Mixing in with blacktail. Wow. Again, look at the banks of waste, not a lot growing. Oops. Right. What year do you think that is? This is 1950. Mm -hmm. And this, again, kind of pixelated, sorry, I'm a crummy picture taker. This is where she's at now. The cool thing about this area is, right, we, we were looking at it again, it's not good enough. So guess what? We're going to go back and redo that again, okay? That's the other thing I don't think we realize a lot of times is that when something gets redone, it's not the end. Right? We have a lot of adaptive management that goes on with these sites, and they get evaluated every five years usually, even quicker than that, and we have the money and we go back and fix them. Okay, So this site, work in progress, bear with us. Um, now I'm going to move uptown a little, okay? So here's the Alice, right? So this is how she sat. Look at it, missing lots of vegetation. That might be some yellow sweet clover, right? But we don't really want that. Do we? So lots, if we had a storm, all that rain was carrying this waste down into these drainages and then eventually to our creeks, right? Um, this is during, so this is when they were starting to bring in all that soil, right? So usually 12, 18 inches of soil and then lime rock over that and then, or lime rock underneath, I'm sorry, and then the soil and then capping it. That's what we, that's what we're referring to caps, okay? A lot of these things are capped. And what then- What would they cap it with? What's that? So in the early, in the early early stuff like the Teeker era, like so late 70s, 80s, it was more of um like a Eurasian mix, right? Um, and it was the Department of Transportation road mix is what it was. But but you have to realize too, the thing that was going on there is we were just looking at like the safety of the public, right? Because people are interacting on with this on a daily basis. So you just needed something to hold that cap in place. Is it a lot of gravel in it? Is that what you're talking oh, about? Oh, no. So more like dirt. It was it was clean dirt, clean fill. Yeah, everything has to go through a process and, have, and it has to actually be tested. Still, even today, all of our dirt goes through and it has to meet the exact specs. Do you want to add, Julia? Yeah. So it's um, 12 inches of fill soil and then 6 inches of topsoil that has to meet a very rigorous protocol that is enforced by the Environmental Protection Agency. And then in that media of six inches of topsoil, so really rich, nutrient-dense soil, we have seed mixes that are approved for use in butte. And so then they grow within that, that six inches. And so that's the grass. 
that when you're driving up Main Street or Montana Street and you look out into the fields, that's what you're seeing. Mm. And that mix has changed over time, right? So we started with the Eurasian grasses from the DOT, but that has, um, Dr. Robert Powell, the restoration ecologist and Buse Rameau have worked really hard to actually move that into a native plant population. So that has continuously evolved. So it's changing all the time. And Robert's constantly vetting with Julia about changing that mix and getting it approved. Yeah. When you say road mix, I think of gravel. Oh, you know, and I, I apologize. I do too. I do too. Sorry, it was it was what was um, you know, like if they're out working on a site, like say how they're on the bridge right there, um, on the interstate, that's their seed mix that they're using. Oh. I apologize. Yeah. Does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so then, right here we are today. Um, so we were talking about this picture because this picture was actually, they were looking at the foreground and I took it because I like that it showed like how we, you know, another thing to this is how steep slopes were in Butte, right? And how the water had run off of it and so how things were tapered. And so this whole knob, right, has been tapered off. Um, plants, different plantings have gone in there. Uh, this is a site where they've done some adaptive management as far as like different planting, different seed mixes like that. If you haven't been up here, again, you gotta go. It's part of, um, it's got its own walking trail up there. It's beautiful, it's really lush. There's lots of vistas, picnic tables, garbage cans. Um, it's It's got lots of interpretive signage. I was up there this summer and I there were lots of deer. It's just wonderful. I mean, it's just another great place. I it, I love you so I'm just there with you. All right, this one. Don't worry too much about where it's at. Um, I realized when I was presenting this before, I was like, wait a minute, Main Street looks crazy here. That's because it changed, right? So, so all of, it's still the same, but it's kind of running around the top here. So all I'm worried about you noticing is we had a giant mill and a giant mine, right, with Lexington up there. Okay, so here's another view of it. Um, which I personally did not realize we had such a huge infrastructure up there. And then, so this is after, right? After it closed down, this is all the waste that was left there. Pretty terrible for that neighborhood, right? Um, so this is during, right, when they're adding in all that soil. And this is after, so this is this fall. Um, this site I've been on, we've been a lot on. Um, we've actually done our community tree plantings there this last spring and this last fall um, and added thousands of more trees and forbs and shrubs up here. This site is doing really well. Um, it's holding holding the soils, the plants are living there. Um, that's why we picked it as a good site for um, adding in, come on in. Um, that's why we picked it to add more plants to it. It's doing really well. So, and again, you can go into here, right? Yeah. So where does all this toxic material go? Oh, great question. Where does it go? <laughs> Maybe some of it, but not all of it. We have too much, right? So that gets back to like in the beginning, right? It was super fun when they were like, well, most, when, when this became, right? They were like, well, most super fun sites, nobody really lives in them. And so we'd have to like move everybody out of Butte and fence it off. And we were all like, wait a minute, we, we have a small problem with that, so that's just not gonna work. So, a lot of it is still there, right? Because where do we put this? And and I, it's everywhere, I mean, there's, there's roads, there's railways, there's, it's everywhere. It's in our yards, which I'm gonna get to that. Um, it's everywhere, so that's why we're doing remediation on a lot of this, right, in reclamation, we're capping it. So a lot of times that might, this is like a carpet. This is what I use with the kids, it's like a carpet. So if you're under the carpet, right, there's all that stuff you swept under there when mom wasn't looking. Sorry, mom. <laughs> right? And then you leave the carpet in place, right? And you don't know what's there, right? And it's protected, right? Look, it's clean. That carpet's protecting me from interacting with it, but it's, it's there, right? That my waste is still there, okay? And that's why with these sites, we monitor these forever. Okay, that's remediation. Restoration, like what they did on the creek, okay, that's where they take as much as they can out of it, and we still monitor those for a great deal of time, but eventually we hope that we can turn that over to nature, right? So we, in our Superfund sites, we're employing two different kinds of cleanup, okay? Um, and, you know, it's, Julia hates this, but again, as a scientist, 
it's kind of, there's a lot of stuff we're figuring out, right? Nobody had done a lot of this stuff before us, so we're figuring it out as we go. Does that get to your question? Sure, so, so the monitoring is just to evaluate how much, how much of that waste or toxic stuff is still percolating downhill and sure. yeah. getting into stuff. It's very rigorous. That would be a whole other talk, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, the, the monitoring protocols that we have in place are very rigorous. Um, we contract with a lot of people, so it's not even, it's getting second opinions, it's collaborating on all of this. Um, but it's, you know, on a site like this, it's looking at, yeah, do we have waste that came up somewhere and it's traveling downhill exactly like that? Mm -hmm. And it's it's really progressed under Julia's um, direction to more like an iPad now, so it's in real time and we can GPS these spots and actually map them out. And then we're, we've been able to get our crews on them immediately, pretty much. Huh. Especially if it's one that's in really dire need, we can call our crews right out and they can fix that. So if like something's going into like an alley and going into a storm drain, that's something that needs to be addressed, right? Or if it's in direct association with like somebody's yard. Yeah, we can get these things going on a really quick basis. But I, I would like to point out, oh. uh, I'm Sarah Sparks, I headed up the program for 30 some years. And uh, we do not have waste that comes to the surface uh, based on the cap we have, we have limestone that prevents upward migration of material. We do have maybe some storm water problems or something that she's talking about that might affect the cap, but the waste that's underneath the cap does not come to the surface. Yeah, I was, I was thinking more moisture percolating through the cap and yeah, and this, that's why we use the limestone also, because uh, when the water hits the limestone, it moves along it. Yeah. yeah. So here's another view of the Lex, right? Um, I loved, I love showing this one to kids because I'm like, look closer. What do you notice? And it takes them a minute, right? But here's your kids playing, right? That is a sweet set, and that's a super sweet sledding hill, right? Right, I know, but look at it now, capped, protective. I feel like this was like for a time, like I feel like a lot of times this is like the poster child sometimes, like the people, like if you're Googling, this this image usually pops up, right? Um, this, oh, again, right, what's missing? Vegetation, right? Look at that, so this is our Buffalo dump area um, in Uptown Butte still. No vegetation, right? Um, lots and lots of waste. And this was taken in um, about a decade ago, so about 2009, and the reason, right, this is, Timber Butte's heavily forested now, right? So you can tell the difference. So this area has continued to see improvement. Um, we've gone back and done this one a couple different times. The plant communities are a little different thriving there. But even again, what a difference. Right? Protective. We're not walking on that waste, right? It's protecting our kids, our dogs, everyone, right? Um, this one I loved. Oh my gosh. Mm. Sorry. I know I love everyone, but um, the original mine. I love this picture. Look at this. Look at the infrastructure that was there, right? What Look at the this, waste. When is this picture from? Do you know? Um, I think it was 1970s. Yeah, from Library of Congress. Yeah. Look at the sleigh. Look at that. Yes, yes, all of it. Oh my God, right behind the courthouse. Incredible, right? Yeah. And then what? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. This is like a jewel of our community. I mean, yes. how many times do you hear people being like, "What? That's incredible." They love going there for the folk festival. I mean. And how convenient that we were able to use our voice tassels and convert them to something we can use. We have this great stage. I mean, this place is just amazing, right? Again, right? Oh, blown away. Blown away. I know. All right. The BNP Railroads, right? Um, so when the BNP Railroads shut down, um, they kind of took some of the stuff out, but then it was kind of left like this, right? Really blighty. Um, so at BSB um, and CESO's urging, BNP went good for it, right? And they turned it into something like this for us. The Copperway Trail, again, public spaces. Um, looks a lot better in those neighborhoods. Um, I personally love these areas. I love these areas because 
we're still tied intimately with our historic places, right? That's the Anselmo in the background. So I love that we can still, you know, walk right through these areas. It's like you're walking back in time, you know. It's just so different, right? It's very quiet, right? Not compared to what it was. Um, this is another view looking back this, uh, back towards Timber View, right? So I took the next picture, bear with me, but here's that red house again. So all that waste, right? Look at all that waste coming down. And ta-da, there's the red house. What? Oh, look at all the trees. Mm -hmm. So that's an orange needle aspen grove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's actually a lot of little, like little guys in here too, kind of on the rock outcrops that Robert Powell's planted. But again, just totally changed this neighborhood. Um, so this is Buffalo, or I'm sorry, Missoula Gulch. So we're looking up north. Um, there's the Alice for reference. Again, look at all the waste, right? Waste, 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 draining. Look at that. Yes, nice rust waste, rust waste. And then here we are now, right? Capped, we do have um, our storm drain in place, right? So that we can kind of convey some of that storm water and capture it and deal with some of it. But a big difference, there's the Alice again, right? Um, I'm gonna show you it from looking towards the Missoula ball fields here now. So south, right? So this one didn't look so bad, right? To me, because I'm like, oh look, it's rubber rabbit brush. But, you know, sometimes rubber rabbit brush can survive there, but still pretty bad. Look at that gully. That's impressive. And now look at it, right? Pretty green, pretty nice. Um, I like showing these ones to kids because it's it, you have to tie things to kids, right, and where places they have been. So this is on the ground floor, right, in the Missoula ball field. Look at that gully again. Beautiful, right? And then look at it now, right? Um, and these pictures don't do it justice. I apologize. There's lots of trees out there now, right? We have a couple ball fields. There's a playground there. Um, this place, again, lots of native tree plantings have gone in around it. You can walk through all of this. So just another area that's been, in my opinion, again, I think it looks a lot better. This one's the best, all right. So Joe Griffin put this series together a while ago. Because this is like one of my favorite areas to walk through. So this is the Granite Mountain Memorial Interpretive Area. So this is the diamond head frame, okay? So this is like as you're going on Birdie's Way and then um, the Granite Mountain Memorial is over here, right? So look at all that waste. Wow, right? There's cap mine shaft there. I mean, there are lots of underground mines in this whole area. Ah, wow. right? I know. And it's even better, right? Because we have lots of actual trees like along here now. I love this area. There's lots of deer in here. There's been a fox here the last couple of years. It just, this one just blows me away. Uh, the first time I saw it, it's still, I'm just like, wow, so crazy. So good, right? So good. Um, and I will tell you, I do have the opportunity to take a lot of tour groups into the Diamond Overlook because there's actually an overlook to the Berkeley Pay here. Um, and I have, we have a lot of requests from people that want to come in and see it. And they're blown away by the work we've done. I will say, because they can see right away the contrast, right? You can see the historical mine waste there and they can see what we've done. They're completely blown away. The, so the, moving down, right? So this is the mountain consolidated. So this is when it was in operation still. Um, this is the 1970s after shutdown, right? So the orbins are kind of toppled. What a mess, right? Yikes. Um, continuing, right? There's, ooh, look at those guys. Look at that. That looks like a leg breaker of a sled hill to me, but lots of waste. Look at that running down the street, right? Terrible, terrible. And then look at all that has been capped, graded. We have beautiful Formas Park. Again, if you guys haven't been up there, the Greenway or the Copperway Trail runs through this. It's a beautiful open space. Yeah, I love um, when I was with CFOP, I would bring every single kid I could up there. Now those kids are high schoolers. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I am sorry, Jake. <laughs> At the time, I was like, oh my, it's Laz's fault too. At the time, I was like, oh my God, guys, look at this. And they got it because they, I would show them the before pictures and then they would be on the ground at it and they were like, this is incredible. This is public. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is looking um, east at the Mountain Con. Okay, so here again, looking sideways, look at all that waste in place there. Look at all that. Look how terrible. And then look what it did for that area. So nice and great. Um, here's a little mine in Buffalo Street. Again, lots of steep piles of waste. 
next to these folks' house, and just, wow, what a difference, right? Um, and this is uh, by the Seward Mine Yard, right? So again, you get the theme, right? Lots of waste, great. Um, the Belmont, again, right? Another amenity we have in our community. Um, I think it's so awesome that we were able to repurpose the Hoist House on this one again. Um, we have the Max Center there, right? Again, another place that sees a lot of cleanup. We've continuously been working on that one. Uh, the Parrot, right? Beautiful. Look at, there's your kid on a bike. Right? Look at that. Look at all of that mind waste. Beautiful. This one I put is in progress. I don't have an after picture yet, right? We're still working on it. So this is before uh, the state started removal here on this phase one. And this is where they're at right now, okay? So they've uh, excavated as far down as they can go. Um, pretty quickly here, they'll start on the other side, right? So this is still a work in progress, okay? Um, we're still gonna figure out what's gonna happen here, okay? So see exciting things in our community. I know, this is my other seller for the kids. I'm like, you guys say there's nothing ever going on in view? <laughs> Seriously. Um, another one, right? Copper Mountain. Where, where did that waste go that we took out from the city center there? Right. From the Parrot went mm -hmm. to? The, the mine waste from, um, excavated from the Parrot. Oh, was that's right. Just goes through an agreement between the state of Montana and Montana Resources. So, so where did they put it? So they actually um, had a road kind of that went kind of underneath here, and it's on the mine property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they took responsibility. Did they process it? <clears throat> no. We don't know, but no. The last I, I asked that question, I did. Oh, yeah, I asked that question, Jim. The answer was no. No, the copper content's going to be way higher. I don't Just a biologist. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. Um, so this is the Clark Mill, right, area. So, again, lots of waste. I have a better picture coming. These ones don't do it justice. But, again, I have to tie the kids back to these things. Like, they just don't realize that, like, when I was a kid, Julia was a kid, we didn't have these, right? Look at it, beautiful football fields, three legend stadiums. Again, have you guys been to Copper Mountain? Oh my God, so three legend stadium, I would have died to play in. That thing's amazing, oh my God. We were lucky that we got to play some of our high school uh, softball games there, and we were like, this thing is amazing, except for the wind. I know, <laughs> I'm aware. Um, again, another look at it, right? There's all the waste. There's some of our ball fields now, right? This picture does it better. Look at that. Oh right? So on top of being Clark's Mill, right, you're, you're all familiar, it was the landfill for a time, right? Look at that. What? Stop it. I know. What is that kind of pie-shaped piece up at the top, just to orient? Oh, yeah. This guy? Uh, yeah. That. So that is, oh, what, are, what are they called, Juliet? That's that trucking. <laughs> One wolf trucking. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank okay. You. Yeah. So this is like the entrance into Copper Mountain here in the parking lot. Here's the park, um, some of the ball fields, right? Football fields, more ball fields, little, little pond, right? It's just amazing. Really changed the area, right? You can go walk out there too. Um, then there's this guy. This guy's exciting. So um, Jeremy Grappo, who's in our department in the audience, Jeremy created this tool um, and it's fascinating. So bear with me for a sec. We're going to play with this a little bit. So he took the 1955 map that I previously showed you guys and using a program he was able to overlay it if it wants to work. Play. Um, this one was probably like the most fun with the kids because they were just blown away. <coughs> This takes a sec. But I think you'll see why it's so cool. So great work, Jeremy. It's amazing. You haven't seen the end, just wait. You gotta zoom out a little. So, um, bear with me, I'm behind the screen, but let me see if I can move. Can I move this, Kim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't have to talk behind the screen. Yeah. So, as you're looking at this, one of the fun, 
Um, so one of the pictures, why I can put this into is one of the pictures that I was really interested, a series, I guess, of before and afters that I was looking for, and that's what really <coughs> kind of introduced me to this, is Emma Park. Um, because, right, Emma Park was Emma Mine. Um, and finding pictures of Emma Mine has proved difficult. We've had Ellen helping us, and it's, it's mm -hmm. difficult. We haven't found quite the series we're hoping for yet, right? But so there's Emma Mine, or Emma, yeah, Emma Mine. Look, there's a ranchie. I love showing that one to the kids too, because I'm like, you guys are so spoiled, <laughs> right? So there's that, and then as you roll it over, look at that. What? Uh, look at that green space that we have. Pretty incredible, right? Do it again, Mom. Do it again. <laughs> I know, right? The kids and I seriously played with this for like 45 minutes. We're like, what? They're like, show my house. Virtually oh, wow. every park is like amazing cast, right? Green space. Um, this tool is just incredible, though. Um, let's see here. So let's go over like cinders, Chester steel, right? Look at all that. Wow. Look at all that. People Park. Look at all those guys. Wow. I guess growing up, you did, I never realized that there was, like, I remember going like for an anaconda and stuff, and it always looked like. So I went to the doctor in Missoula a lot as a kid, and by the time we'd get over to Missoula, it was so green and, yeah. and like another world, but it always right? looked like Mars on the way to the and stuff, everything dead. But we're not that bad, right? No. Like, holy cow, so, look where we were. Oh, wow, all the green now. Look at, amazing. and look at how much, like, tech has changed. I love tech, that's when I went there, but, like, look at how much that's changed. Like, oh, original canvas, and then, oh, wow, look. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could play with this all day, seriously. I don't want to. <laughs> I could be here all day with it. But like, seriously, what a tool, right? We have used it as such a resource because time and time again, right, if you're looking for this, you know, well, what was this a long time ago, right? Um, it's just incredible to be able to go back and look at something like this. So to wrap up here, get you guys out of here. You've been listening to me long enough. Um, oh. One more thing, sorry. So you guys, some of you guys are probably aware of RMAP, so the Residential Metals Abatement Program, right? So we do have um, waste in yards as well, right? Oh, I didn't put it in here, but one of the, my favorite pictures to show kids is um, these people's yard, and there's not a blade of grass in it, and it, there's like a kid, little boy playing out there, and they're like, is that his yard? And I'm like, uh-huh. You guys think you have it bad. I don't know about it. Um, but so, our map could seriously be its own talk. Um, but the only plug I'll put for the, it is this. So we come in, we sample your yard. If we find elevated levels of arsenic, lead, or mercury, we excavate that. We go in, we clean it out. You want a manicured lawn, you get a manicured lawn. You want, let's say some folks have asked for like a rock garden or like more of native plants associated in there that they don't have to water. Sure. Yeah, as long as it's within reason, yes. Right? And that is, again, just another measure that is protective to your health. Um, another component of our map is also addicts, right? If you're familiar with that, that it doesn't matter what the source of lead was there, right? Because there's lead in paint, doesn't matter. We just want to get it out of there, okay? I know I had, we had our own house done a few years ago. Can't even tell you how amazing it was. So clean, so quick, it was over the blink of an eye. So that's my plug. Um, do you find most of the yards that you have to do that to are uptown, or do you ever do them on the flat? Or so it's within the new priority soils unit. Um, that area is looking to expand um, with some of the cleanup that's coming. So um, in the future, hopefully everybody will be able to call and have that option for them. Um, I I've, I've been curious myself on the data and like where do we have pockets, and we're not we don't we haven't identified a pocket. But yeah, I'm with you. It's kind of widespread though. And if you think about the way that the waste came through the valley, right? So we had seven smelters operating at one time coming through our valley. The other thing too is that even when we moved smelting over to the Washoe, guess where that inversion carries that sweet smokestack smoke to? It went up and down through the Summit Valley, right? So, you know, it's kind of wider spread. So I'm bringing you back to this, right? Are we done yet? No. 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 Right? We're not. More to come. Right? And that's hopefully hopefully what's going to be coming out pretty soon here, right, is um, a lot more of this work. 
But even then, just because, you know, people are signing off on this, does that mean we're done? No. no. The monitoring that's going to go into this is very rigorous. Um, the other thing is I keep bringing up adaptive management. So if, if something's not done right, it'll be gone back to and fixed and fixed and fixed until it is right. Okay. So again, things are going to get better. Um, you don't have to drink my Kool-Aid, it's cool. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, like through these before and after pictures though, hopefully you kind of remember like, oh yeah, that is what it looked like. And wow, yeah, a lot of work has been done in the last 30, 40 years, right? It's changed drastically. I think um, my sister lives in Pittsburgh now and when she comes home, she's like, oh my God, feels like she actually thought about moving home. Like, <laughs> so with that, any questions? Oh, thank you for your time, by the way. <laughs> Roy. Is that because I'm in